In the previous lessons, we learned about the CSS selectors. In this one, we'll learn about the XPath. That is the XML querying language, which is specifically created to select web elements. Now, XPath is a bit tougher, but provides more functionality than CSS selectors. So to use the same, we'll go ahead and try to select web elements based on their tag name and their attribute and its corresponding value. So let's say what we'd like to do is select the title of the website. Why? I'll just tell you that in a moment. Because with XPath, what we do is select things with path. What that means is that we can start from the very head of the element or the root of the document that is HTML itself. And we use slashes to start and separate selectors or things. Let's say we'd like to start from the root. So we use a slash and type in the tag name of the root that is HTML. You can see it is selected. Then we need to go inside of the head. You can see it is selected. And then inside of the head, we will have the title which we see here. So we can just type out that you can see it is selected. So using XPath, we can select things explicitly by their position just like this. And this here is called a absolute path. But if you'd just like to select all the heading elements, that is the H1 elements, we can use relative paths as well. That is, instead of one slash, we can start with two slashes, which means anywhere inside the document. Now I can just go ahead and pass in the tag name, which I want, that is H1. You can see it goes ahead and finds all the 12 instances of the H1 elements in the website. Now to test the same with Playwright, we can use the page locator method. And instead of the CSS string, we can provide it the XPath string. And just like CSS, we can prefix our selector with XPath equals. Now it is optional because Playwright will detect whether it is a XPath or CSS selector. But if you want, you can explicitly define it as well. And here we would just like to select all the H1 elements relatively. So now we can go ahead and highlight all of the H1 elements and you can see that does it. Now let's say what we want to do is select an element based on its attribute and value. So let's say this nav bars right here, which is an H1 element with the ID of nav bars. Now ID is attribute and nav bars is the value of this attribute. So just like CSS, we can type in square brackets and inside of those, we'll provide the attribute and its value. To specify an attribute in XPath, we start with the add symbol and then provide the name of the attribute. In this case, it is ID that is right here. So I can just write in ID and then specify its value that is equals in quotes nav bars like this. So that's how you can use an attribute and its value in XPath. We can test the same with our page locator. So we start with square brackets, specify the attribute name using the add symbol and then the attribute name, which is ID, equals the value that is nav bars like this. So using the add symbol, we can specify any attribute and that applies for anything. So let's say if you'd like to select this input field with the read only attribute, we can simply go ahead and do that as well. So. First of all, let's go ahead and remove this one. And I'll go ahead and remove the X path as well to show you that it is optional. We will start with the tag name and actually we'll start with two slashes. That is a relative path and then box brackets. Inside of that, we'll have the attribute that is read 
only. Now, if I go ahead and hit enter, you can see it selects the read only input fields that is two in here. And to show you another use case, we can select this input field as well with the value, which is an attribute with the value as wrong value. Uh, so I can go ahead and say page, locator again, the input, the attribute name is value, and then the value itself, kind of confusing, but it is wrong value. So let's go ahead and highlight that as well. And you can see it is getting highlighted. So that's how we can use XPath to select an element based on its relative or absolute position with its tag name and attributes.